sisters in Christ. I want to welcome everybody here this morning to a worship service. I'm going to start by reading scripture this morning. I bow in prayer to the Father because of my work among you. From the Father, every family in heaven and on earth gets his name. I pray that he will use his glorious riches to make you strong. May his Holy Spirit give you his power deep inside you. Then Christ will live in your hearts because you believe in him. And I pray that your love will have deep roots. I pray that it will have strong foundation. May you have power together with all the Lord's holy people to understand Christ's love. May you know how wide and long and how high and deep it is. And may you know his love, even though it can't be known completely. Then you will be filled with every good thing God has for you. God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. He does everything by his power that is working in us. Give him glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. Give him glory through all time and forever and ever. Amen. And that is Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 from the New International Reader's Version. And may we bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, God of all things, Lord, the great I am. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, that you've already seen the ending of, that we're just beginning. And we just trust you that, God, you'll show up today, God, because you've kept us all week long, Lord, and given us a new opportunity to come today to praise you for all the dangers that you kept us from, seen and unseen, God. And we say thank you, God. We thank you for the breath that we sometimes take for granted. Lord, that you've given us, Lord, the last one can't do us no good, and the next one is not promised. So we thank you, God. We thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. We thank you for bringing us to this house to hear your word, Lord, so that we can renew our mind and get rejuvenated to go back into the world to be the disciples that you created us to be. And we can show and prove what is your good, perfect, and acceptable will. We ask this in your precious and mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God praise in the sanctuary today. Hallelujah. Come on, if you don't mind, stand Jesus. to your feet and praise the Lord with us. And put your hands together. Come on, everybody. Come on, clap your hands with us. You know this song is there. Come on. 
to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And if you're glad to be here, just give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. By way of announcements this morning, special thanks to Project 250 supporters. Uh, because of your generosity, Old Star Branch will be donating $1,000 to the Lucas Foundation, the Augusta Mini Theater, the Golden Harvest Food Bank, and the Community Ministry of North Augusta. Amen. Put your hands together. Because our God is a good God. He's an awesome God. Remember uh, weekly Bible study on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. and then again at 6.30 p.m. Uh, just want to thank each and every one of you on behalf of our pastor and the women's ministry. For those of you who joined us yesterday as we worship God through food, fun, and fellowship. Um, we posted some pictures on Facebook, but when I tell you there's some good looking women up in here. Amen. And our princess, they were uh, so pretty yesterday and they helped us. So we thank all of you all and um, just want to remind you that uh, next month on the third Sunday will be our pastor's anniversary. Our pa Amen. Go ahead and give it up for our pastor. Amen. For such a time as this, God has placed him right here. Amen. So you will be hearing more. Uh, from us as we proceed just want to go ahead and let you know who our uh, ministry leaders are for this year so that if you this is your pastor this is your church you don't have to be a part of pastor support to support pastor amen and to participate in worship so we want you uh, we have sister Vera Robinson is on the committee sister Barbara Williams Uh, Mother Ruthella Reardon, who am I missing? Sister Lawanda Daniels, and Sister Beverly Harris, amen, and of course myself. So if you want to participate, please see any of us uh, so that as we come together to worship and thank God for our pastor, you may be a part of that if you want to do something special. We encourage you to be here for worship as well. Um, just before we give, just want to ask you to lift up our <clears throat> sister, Alicia Rafer. She catered our meal yesterday, and um, she was not feeling well afterwards, and she has been admitted to the hospital. So we want to ask you that you will uh, lift her up in prayer that God will do a what he do, because he is Jehovah Rapha, yes. the God that healeth. Yes. Yes. This morning, as we continue in worship, we want to remind you that you can... Uh, give without worshiping, but you can't worship without giving. Amen. Amen. You can give without worshiping, but you can't worship without giving. So however you want to give this morning, be it Givelify or by mail, post office box 1306, Clearwater, South Carolina, 29822, or in person before or after service, we have the time. A box in the um, back and the trustees uh, will wait for you. Amen. At this time, has somebody been designated for prayer? We're going to ask uh, Min, uh, Reverend Vincent to come and pray over our seats. Blessings and peace unto you this morning. said according to your word in Ecclesiastes that he that observed the cloud will not sow but he that observed the wind will not reap but what is cloudy day or what is a wind you said in your word that we must put seed in the ground and we thank you for the opportunity as we sow our seed we shall reap the blessing that you have given to us based upon the seed which we are sown. So as we sow sparingly, we shall reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we shall reap also bountifully. But we thank you, God, for your blessing and favor 
we're going to see, which we have saw. We build, oh God, as we pray, for debt to be canceled, bills paid off, better jobs, increase in our finances. We thank you, oh God, because the blessing of faith upon even in our whole storehouse that we read. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for the favor of you, Father God, to manifest in our life on the blessing and favor that you've given to us as we sow our seeds. And we thank you, God. Because yes. you said in word that as we sow our seeds, we thank you, oh God. You said we give and it shall be given to us good measures, pressed down and shaken together. It shall men give it to us. And we just thank you, oh God, knowing that you said according to your word, that men should give it to us as we sow our seeds. And we thank you, God, as we expect to know God from our seed is what you sow. Because you said it. And we believe it. We walk in it. And we just thank you for the blessing of the seed which you sow in Jesus' name. Anybody glad that he knows your name this morning?
bless his name. Most holy divine, most holy divine God, we bless you. For you are the great I am. To the most high God, who's El El Yon. To El Shaddai, a God who is more than enough. To Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. Jehovah Tishkin, you, you are our righteousness. Jehovah Shalom, you are our peace. And Father, we just thank you. Father, it is preaching time. God, you are worthy of all of our praise. And Father, we need to hear a word from heaven, oh God. We need to hear something profound and some prophetic that will help us, oh God. That we will grow. That we will be who you have us to be. Spirit of the Almighty God, breathe fresh upon us. Have your way, God. Have your way. Just do what you do, God. Heal, set captives free. And God, we bind Satan. We rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus in this house. Have your way. This is our prayer. Just wherever you are, just from the fruit of thy lips, just worship him. say can fix, he's already fixed. So we ought to praise his name, praise his name. Hallelujah. There was a word, there was a word, Revelation chapter number two. Good to see all the visitors, all the visitors in the house, just wave your hand wherever you are. Bless the Lord. Evangelist, good to see you in the house. Bless the Lord. Any other members, visiting friends, we just wave. If you're a member, just wave your hand. Good to see you and good to be seen. Again, thank you, ladies, for all that you all did this weekend. I saw a lot of pictures. I didn't want to be the only man here, so I stayed home this time. But I saw the pictures, and everybody's been saying great things. God bless you. Revelation chapter 2, there was a word. There was a word. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1.
bless this nigga. Just for a few moments on today, um, the Lord was pressing on me to come back and deal with this a little bit more. Our subject for today is going to be return to your first love. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. Saints of God, it's important that we understand in this season that there are so many things that are changing and so many things that are transpiring in our land. It's important that we all understand as kingdom citizens that our responsibility is that we cultivate our relationship with God, that we get closer. Because with all the things that's getting ready to take place and some of the things that have already taken place, you need to be anchored in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's important that you all understand that you must spend time in the presence so that you can be able to get direction. Because in this season, if you're not in the presence of God, you won't be able to handle the things that are going to take place. It's important that you know God for yourself and have a relationship with his Holy Spirit so his Holy Spirit can teach you and can guide you through things that you've never seen. You live in America now. You live in our city, our state. You can see so many things have happened shootings every day. People are being killed. People are being hurt. So many things are happening in our land. But it's important that the people of God stay in position so they can be able to have a revelation, so God can reveal himself to us, so that we can be able to help promote and push kingdom citizenship. It's important that we understand that our responsibility, because we're connected to the king, that we must stay connected to him so that we can be able to present or proclaim his gospel. Because our world needs the gospel. Our world needs to hear a word from God so that the word will change us. Because the Bible said the word of God, it is full of power. And the responsibility of the word is to expose the crooked things that are in our lives. So saints of God, John was here on the island of Patmos. John was here, God was speaking to him while he was on the island of Patmos. He was giving him instruction. He was trying to reveal the things that were going to take place, the things that were happening. Revelation 1, 19 said, therefore write what you have seen, what is and what will take place after this. John was in a place that God was speaking to him, giving him instruction to write to the seven churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven lampstands are the seven churches. And Paul, John was getting revelation from God to be able to give us instruction on how we should carry and conduct ourselves in times such as these. There were seven churches that John was writing to, and the churches were Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyteria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And each church had a distinctive uh, place. Each church had a different issue. Just like the world today, our churches have issues. Our churches have issues, and we must begin to fall in place so that we can be able to find our, what our issues is so that we can be able to change, so that we can be able to move forward into the things that God has for us. And what I'm saying today that all of us, the church, I know he's talking to the different seven churches, but he's also talking to the individuals, individuals who have been baptized, who have been born again, who have set Jesus who have made Jesus Christ their Lord and their leader. It's important that we understand because we are the ecclesia, we are the called out ones, it's our responsibility that we get to know God. It's important because the word of God says in Revelation 1, it talks about, he said, blessed is the man who readeth this prophecy aloud. In other words, when you read the book of Revelation, he said that you are blessed. And so many people are afraid to, to go into the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation is going to reveal to some things that are going to happen. And I know all of us don't really want to know what's going to happen, but there are some good days ahead of us, but there are also some bad days ahead of us. But it's up to us as kingdom believers and kingdom citizens that we be like John. When John was on the island of Patmos, he was listening to God for instruction. Can I speak to somebody today? Don't be afraid to study your word. Don't be afraid to get in God's word so God can be able to give you what you need. And thanks to God, this first church here was called Ephesus. This place in Ephesus, 
It was an awesome place. Ephesus was the capital city of the Roman province in Asia. Ephesus was known for a center of trade. Ephesus had an amphitheater that seated over 50,000 spectators. Ephesus also was the location of the great temple of Artemis or Diana. It was a place where they worshiped this goddess. This goddess Diana was a one wild beast and they had all sorts of things of indulging and sexual promiscuity. They were doing all sorts of things. They worshiped and bowed down this goddess of wild animals. But thanks to God, but there were still some people who were in the church when it was established in Ephesus and they were doing the right thing. They made up in their mind, no matter what everybody else was worshiping, they made up in their mind that they were going to follow God and they were going to follow Christ even to the end. Saints of God, I speak to you today, I ask you today, and I say to you, make sure that you make up in your mind that you're going to follow Christ to the end. Because turbulence and trials will come. They're going to hit you because you are part of the body of Christ. They are going to come, but you will be distracted by all sorts of things, but don't allow those spirits to distract you. If I can speak to somebody today, the Lord is doing great things. He's doing awesome things. But listen, stay focused. When he was writing to this angel, when he was writing, Jesus was the speaker in this text talking to John. Look what he was saying in chapter 2, verse 1. He said, write to the angel, the church in Ephesus. Thus says the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Look what he says. I know your works. He said, I know your labor. I know your endurance. And I know that you cannot tolerate evil people. You have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and have found them to be liars. He says, verse 3, I know that you have preserved and endured hardships for the sake of my name. But then he says, and now, and have not grown weary. Look how, you see in verse 1, Jesus was the speaker. Remember verse 2 and 3, he was commending them for the works that they were doing. He said, you all knew the word and you all took a, stu a stand on the word. You began to expose false teachers and false uh, prophets. But he says, I also commend you because you hated evil. He says, I know your works. I know your deeds. I commend you for enduring heart. But thanks to God, but now in this next verse, this is what Jesus says. Verse four, he says this, but I have this against you. You have abandoned your first love. You see Jesus the speaker in chapter verse one, verse two and three, he was commending them, but verse four, there was a complaint. There is the complaint that the church has lost or forsaken its first love. The problem means two things. The church and its believers had lost their feelings for Christ. My brothers and sisters, if the Greek says your love, they, they lost their love for Christ. Be believers had left their first love. Christ was no longer first in their lives. They were, he was no longer first in their life. They were putting themselves and their own affairs first. He said, he said they were putting the church first, the building first. He said they were putting programs and, and services of ministry first. They were putting everything before Christ. They became more attached to the church than they were to Christ. And so many people are living in this world today he says, I know you've done great works and you're doing great works. You're enduring trials. He said, but some of you have left your first love. You have abandoned me. You have left me. My brothers and sisters, God is saying to us, he must be first. Protos is the beginning. 
He must be the major priority in everything that we do, even before we do church. We must have a relationship with him that give us the revelation that will eventually elevate us to a new place. So many people are doing the work of church, but they don't know Christ. I don't want to do the work of church and go to hell because I don't know the Christ who's able to save. And this is what John the Revelator had to hear in his vision. In other words, they had lost their feeling of warmth and tenderness for Christ. They had lost their sensitivity to Christ, their fervor, their spark, and their unction. There are some people who are in church, let me break it this way, some people who are in their marriage who have lost their warmth and their tenderness, their fervor, their spark, and their unction. They don't smile like they used to. They don't do things they like they used to. They're not doing things excitedly like they used to. He was saying to this church, they were not fellowshipping and coming. They weren't coming and praying and sharing with Christ, not like they did when they first were converted. He said, when they first got saved, they was at church and at Bible study. They didn't put anything before Christ, but now we're in a season where he's saying that everyone is putting everything before him. We're putting our children, our careers, our jobs, everything before him. We serve a God who is a jealous God. We serve a God who's not going to allow anything to be before him. They were not walking in consciousness and awareness of Christ's presence. They were not rejoicing like they used to. Thanks to God. Picture a young man who falls in love with a young lady or falls in love with a cougar. When he first meets her, he wants to spend time with her and share with her. He wants to be attached to her and make her first in his life. That should always be our desire for Christ. Christ wants us to make him, he wants to be our everything. In a season that we're in and approaching, you're going to need the anointing of his power to be able to move forward. You're going to have to operate in humility to be able to move forward. But if you don't fall in love with Jesus, if you don't begin to acknowledge him before you do anything, if you don't begin to seek his presence before you do anything, before you work with the church or work with God's people, you're going to have to seek his presence he said, you abandoned me. And I said this last Sunday, some of you go to church because of duty and not devotion. Because devotion gives you direction. When you spend time in the present, you won't just go to church to be on a committee or auxiliary. Because you have devotion, devotion will send you into a place. Can I speak to somebody today when God, if you love God, devotion ain't going to cause you to sit on your butt. Preach, man. Devotion ain't going to cause you to get into a place that you learn from God and you let him lead you into a new place. Brothers and sisters, it's got to fall into love. Matthew 24 and 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. I've never seen so many cold church folks. Never seen so many people who don't allow God to give them instruction to show them how to move. This message has been bothering me because I see so many marriages. They just live in the same house. 
It's amazing how couples, they want everybody to see them in public that they got it together. They drive nice, they look nice, the kids dress nice, but when they get home, they don't even spend any time with them. And then when we look at them and see things, and we see that they are no longer together, they presented something that was not true. Just like the church folks, we present sometimes things that are not true. We can preach and we can teach, we can dance, we can shout, we can worship, we can sing, we can usher, we can do media, we can be on deacon ministries and trustee ministries. But, but, but when if there's no devotion and dedication, if you don't love God, you're going to make a problem out of everything that you're a part of. In other words, you look good in the presence but there's no power. You look good in the present, but there's no peace of God. And he's, and John, he was saying, the church of Ephesus, they had abandoned their first love. Can I speak to, to the church today? I hear the Lord saying, don't abandon me in this season because you think you've seen shootings and you think you've seen people dying. You have not seen anything yet. He said, don't abandon me. Demons are getting ready to rise because they realize they only have but a short period of time. But if you get in my presence, if you keep loving me, I will give you power. I will give you peace. I will give you peace that surpasses Mm. Listen, Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teachings. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He said, if you love me, you're going to obey my teachings. Saints of God, the church has lost its love for people. The church saw a rupture take place in the fellowship and, and its love for one another. When the church was first founded, a deep love existed in Ephesus among the members. The church had a loving heart and a helping hand, a readiness to labor together even though persecution. But some things happened. What? There is no explanation. So all the negative things that rupture the fellowship or erase love are here. When you don't grow, what ruptures a church? It causes people to get to a place who don't spend time, who are not in love with God. It'll be criticism every day. When you married to a person, if you know you ain't happy, you know you ain't where you're supposed to be, you criticize and you grumble about everything. What is happening among the ecclesia of the churches when we should be working together and loving each other? Jealousy has filled the atmosphere. My brothers and sisters, God is saying to us, we've got to remove this criticism, this grumbling, this jealousy, and this selfish mind. A marriage ain't going to work unless both people are doing their part. A marriage ain't going to work unless both people are moving into the presence of God. And this is what John was saying. This is what God was speaking to John. He's saying, you have abandoned me. Can I help somebody today who may be struggling? John 13, 34 and 35 says this. A new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. How in the world you say you love God and you don't love me? Amen. How do you say you love God and don't love the enemy? When you have forsaken your love for God, watch what happened. It's hard to love somebody else. If you don't love God, you can't love yourself. If you don't love yourself, then you can't love others. The Bible says, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Can I speak to somebody today? God is saying, return back to your first love. John 15 and 12 says this. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Aren't you glad God loved you? Amen. Brother Jeter, I'm so glad God loved me. 
I'm so glad he loved me, Brother Life. But I'm so glad when I messed up, you know, uh, he could have did away because the wages of sin is death, but the gift that God gives is eternal life. I'm so glad that God gave me a second chance. I'm so glad that God gave me a second chance to be able to get things right. So, saints of God, quit being so hard on people because their sins may be a little different than yours. Mm. So look what he says. Romans 12, 9 says this. Brother White, love must be sincere. He says, hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. 1 Corinthians 1, 10 says this. Uh, Brother Hightower, I, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be perfectly united in the mind and thoughts. 1 Peter 1.22 says this, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you uh, have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. If you love God, you love yourself. If you love yourself and you know what God has done for you through Christ, then it make it easier to love people deeply. And I want to leave your saints, but he says to the church, return to your first love. If you want to see God do greater things, saints, you got to return to your first love. But what are you saying to us today, God? He's saying to us this. Verse 5, and let's read it. Are you with me? Remember then how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove my, remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So he was, John was listening to all of this what God was telling him to tell to the church, he says, repentance. We must repent. Somebody say repent. Yes. And remember there, here's the counsel that he gives us. If you don't abandon your first love, he says, repent and remember. The Lord counsels the church to return to him. When a church or a believer goes astray, the Lord issues the very same call that he issues here to return, the steps that are involved. First, he says, remember, from where you have fallen. Emphasis had to go back and think about how when people were getting saved, how they was blessing people, how they was helping people. They weren't judging people. They were at a place, they did things for the people and how they fed them and they fed them and they were taking care of them. He said, think back over your former love for the Lord. Remember his presence. My brothers and sisters, the feelings of warmth and tenderness, the fervor, spark and unction had left, but he says, remember where you have fallen. I know I talked about it a little last week, but you know, I said in relationships, when you first meet someone, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. You're talking and you're laughing, you're sharing and you're crying. You're talking about everything together. Can't wait to see them. Can't wait to see them fix up and can't wait to take them to dinner. Can't wait to hold their hand. Can't wait to give them whatever they ask for. Can't wait to get along. Some of you don't supposed to be alone, but some of you can't wait to get along and be there by themselves. You remember how exciting it was? Some of y'all go back to your marriage when you first met him. How you, when you first saw me, baby, what you say? Oh, he's so dark and... <laughs> Jesus. But when we spent time together, we communicated, we talked, we shared, we expressed things. And that's what God is saying to us. He says, remember how it was when you first met me, when you first got into my presence, how life has changed for you. He's saying to us that you got to get back 
into the presence and do things because if you don't, you're going to be held accountable. You will be destroyed. He says, repent, turn away from whatever has pulled you from God. You know how people who are married and doing well, people, it's something that pulls them away. And sometimes it's other people. Somebody say amen. And sometimes it's, it's other people. Sometimes it's jobs and it's our children. So many of our, 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 our extracurricular activities can pull us away from God. That's how it is. I've seen marriages. I counsel folks all the time. And, and I, they, they come in their office. But when you see, I know something has pulled them. As some of us I see who come to church, I see something has bothered them mentally, spiritually, that, that has keeping them out of the present. I, you know, I, I say this all the time. I love people to come to church, but my concern is that you have a relationship. Because if you have a relationship, God's going to reveal to you where you should be and when to be there. But what I'm saying tonight, what God is saying to the church, he says he's given us the counsel that we must return. We must return. We must repent. If we repent, we can see God do something greater. Something uh, is consuming your thoughts. Something is consuming your energy. You got to keep your mind from focusing upon, you got to keep your mind focusing upon Christ and fellowship and communion with him. You're not flickering your mind to him in prayer as you walk through the day. God says get closer to him. He wants us to commune with him. He wants us to get into his presence so that he can be able to give us what we need to be able to move forward. But he's saying if you don't return, he says, I'm going to remove my lampstand. He said, I'm going to remove your power. I'm going to remove it from you so you will just exist, but you won't produce. Can I ask you a question? How many people that you see, or even in our communities, how many lifeless churches how many dull churches? How many churches are just mechanical? And it's nothing more than a form. How many of churches have lacked the presence of Christ even in the service? They lack the presence of Christ in the service. They lack the light and the witness of Christ and his power. That's just like relationships. It's just a form. They're dull. They're lifeless. But Christ does not want to remove his lampstand. But if we don't love him, we'll be going in the name of the church. And we won't have the power that we need to persevere. My brothers and sisters, God is saying to us, We've got to repent and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5. God is saying to us, Luke 13 and 3, but unless you repent, you too will perish. Acts 2.38 says, repent and be baptized all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Christ died for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Acts 3 and 19 says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Uh, out. You can be wiped out and you can be refreshed. And your refreshing comes from the Lord. My brothers and sisters, God is saying to us this season, let's get back to him. Let's not just go through the motion. Let's not go through the motion of just that we are a, a church. He says, position yourself to be the church. He says, he said, Re remember, and he says, repent. He said, begin now to flicker your mind to Christ and take just a moment to pray. Do this every day and every day as often as you can. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Can I speak to somebody today? You know how when you first met someone, you call them in the morning, you call them at lunch, you call them in the evening, 
that's what God is saying to us. He says, when you started praying and you petitioning me, he says, keep doing it. In this relationship, he says, you got to keep calling me. You got to keep talking to me. He says, you got to set times to get along with Christ and study his word and pray so that you'll be able to move to a new place. Can I speak to somebody today? Repent. And remember what God has done. He said, begin to walk just as Christ would walk. If you are walking with him, God is saying, position yourself. He said, this is the warning. He said, if we don't repent and remember, I'm going to remove my lampstand. And I want to tell you, saints of God, it's a season. And I'm going to say this. I believe the world is where it is now. Is because the church, some of us have fallen out of love. We've fallen out of love with him. Because we've fallen out of love, we let things, and we let things happen in our city, in our state, in our community, because people sit and watch things instead of make things happen. I speak to somebody, I speak to all of us. God is saying, return. He said, there are some things that I want to do for you. There's some things I want to do through you, but you got to get to a place that you come. You got to come to him. You got to be able to come to him. God wants us to be the church. He wants us to be an example in this season. This is a season that we, we, we've got to be his true representatives. This is a season if you love him, when someone loves you and you love them back, they give you Whatever is theirs. Can I speak to the congregation? We are heirs to the king. We are heirs to the promise of God. God loves us so much. Whatever is his is ours, but he's saying love him. Love on him because he does not want to remove the left stand. But if we don't obey and follow him, my brothers and sisters, we're going to mess our lives up and we're going to mess up the lives of others. I remember a story, a true story, a young lady her mother always poured into her daughter, poured into her daughter. She said, my daughter is going to, she's going to Yale. And she had everything just laid out for her daughter. Everything. She worshipped the crown her daughter walked on. And saying something happened to her daughter. Something because she loved her so much. Had $500,000 when she came out of high school. Thanks to God when she left. High school, two days later, she was hit by a car and killed. All of those years, she's pouring into her daughter educational things and trying to get her to go to the next level. I push education. I want all of us to get the best. She was giving her everything but Jesus. She never went to church. They never talked about the church. But her mind was, I work, I work, I work. So my children, children can have the best. I work and I work and I work so that they can have and they won't ever begin to be where I was. Can I speak to somebody today? It's a season, saints, that we got to return to our first love and love God. So we love God. We love ourselves. And then when we love ourselves, then we'll be able to love others. And we must prioritize can I speak to somebody today? He's saying, repent and return to your first love. And remember, you know, can I tell you what God has done? Anybody going through some sickness right now, just wave your hand. If you're going through and you've gotten some bad news, can I tell you? Just remember, if God healed you before, he'll do it again. If God brought you out before, anybody, anybody struggling with finances, anybody got any financial issues, just wave your hand. Just be honest. And see, you got to be honest with yourself if you want this love relationship to get better. If you're honest, if you just remember, watch this, if God brought you out then, he'll do it again. Can I talk to somebody today? If you just remember, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Can I speak to somebody today? God owns everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. But you got to remember, you got to repent. You got to move back into the place. Can I speak to somebody? Don't be afraid. Move into his presence before you start your morning off. Good morning. 
Before you start your morning, just thank you, Lord, for I show gratitude for what you've done. Before you start your day, because as you start your day, you realize you're going to approach demons and spirits. So if you have been into the presence of God, you can look and see that your daddy got you. Can I speak to somebody? What God is trying to reveal to the church God wants us to be powerful and not powerless. We can't allow these false teachers to infiltrate our church. And that's why he celebrated this church because they knew doctrine. They knew teaching. They did good works. Can I say this? Gifts and callings are without repentance. You can, you can be doing things and people healed and set free and delivered, but can I speak to you? I don't want to be using God's power. I don't want to be using what God has. And then Paul says, when I die, I'll be a castaway. God is saying this. Uh, I don't want to tell everybody else about the goodness of Jesus. Then I myself die and go to hell. I don't want to tell everybody else about a good marriage and my marriage is on shaky ground. I don't want to tell everybody else about how good God can find that he can do this but then mine is a shamble but can I speak to somebody today he says return unto your, your first love who is your first love I thought you would never ask he's a wonderful he's a counselor he's a mighty God he's the everlasting father he's the prince of peace he's the bishop of souls he's the rose of Sharon he's the lily of the valley he's bright as a morning star he's the rose of Sharon somebody say he's Andy and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm home. He is the bishop of soul. He's the chief cornerstone. He is your everything. He is Emmanuel, God with us. But you got to return to him and let him be your Lord. Because if you ask anything in my name, he said, I shall do it. This revelation concerns that things that must take place. This, re this revelation was given to John. It was given by an angel and it was accurately reported. This revelation that God is saying, if you read it, it'll bless the man who reads it and hears it, but it also bless the man that obeys it. And I want to tell you today, love Jesus. If you got problems loving people, if you fall in love with Jesus, he will begin to show you how to love. As I leave you today, saints of God, return to your first love. Don't. Just every eye closed. Every head bowed. Just if you're dating or married. If you are going to have a good date, just imagine what you would do. You with Jesus right now, the one who loves you, loves you to, to the fullness. Just worship him. Because he has to be the priority. Can I tell you, this building that we worship in and some people love it more than anything, this thing ain't going to burn. Can I tell you, the people that you're trying to impress so much and don't have Jesus, they're going to burn too. But you've got to have a relationship with the Savior. Can I tell you, until some of your marriages get better, it's not going to get better until you deny yourself. If you deny yourself, my brothers and sisters, and take up the cross and follow, see, sometimes you got to move out the self. See, the problem with some of the people in Ephesus, what had changed some of them thought everything was about them. Can I speak to somebody? What's missing in your relationship? You want them to do it, but maybe you got to do it for yourself first. And what's missing in the relationship with Christ? Maybe you have to do it first. You got to be able to make him a priority. Can I speak? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all of these things shall be added unto who? You. If you need peace. You got to seek his presence. You got to get back into his presence. Righteousness. You got to do the things the way he said that he wants them done. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Your job is to make him happy. Your job is because you make him happy, you will make them happy. And this is what John the Revelator was saying to the church. He was getting all of this from Jesus and he's saying, I need you all to return. 
our community will be a shamble. Our communities will, uh, they're going to look so bad. You see, they put new houses all over this community. They're putting things all over our community. But until the church return to their first love and start loving people like God, love them, people are going to keep going by the church and going to the club. Because until the church return to their first love, when people can see them being nice outside of church, God loves you. Maybe there's one today who don't know Jesus. To be continued, there are things that he liked about this church, but he had to give the them of the earth. a complaint. But he gave them the solution to fix it. Can I speak to somebody? The Bible says, Hallelujah, if you believe Jesus. in your heart and confess thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and that he died and rose from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. Or maybe that's one. Maybe that's one. hell and death. If you repent, be baptized. All in the name of Jesus Christ. He said you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Some of us are trying to live without the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost teaching you and guiding you, you'll be able to go to new levels and new places in this season. I say this, the devil wants your family. He wants to kill your children. The devil wants your church. He wants to destroy your church but until you return unto the Lord. Maybe that's one. Mm. Maybe that's one. Hallelujah. Maybe that's one. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you would die right now, what would you spend eternity? By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free, yes. healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in one. victory. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been made free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my joy back. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory, got my hope back. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, by the hands, by the hands of the Almighty. Thank you. 
God a praise. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us, let us pray. Hallelujah. Remember Bible study Wednesday morning at 11 and also Wednesday morning. I mean Wednesday morning at 11 and also Wednesday night at 6.30. Please come and join us. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We praise you, God, and we bless you. We thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, for being so gracious and loving and kind to us, oh God. We just pray, God, that what you've given us, God, we will really in turn give it to someone else. God, move us out of the way, God, because we know it's getting late for some of us. We know, God, the sun is almost going down. But God, we don't want the sun to go down, oh God, without us repenting and getting it right with you. We don't want the sun to go down, God, without us having a really solid relationship with you and your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for every marriage that's here. I pray, God, that every single person, whatever someone's going through, God, grant them their heart's desires. Whatever there's been the distractions of God, remove it out of the way. And, Lord, we're going to forever give your name and praise. I pray, Lord, for your people. Bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. Keep your hands on us and keep us away from evil. We pray, God, for our city. God, the shootings that have been happening in our communities, oh God, cover us, oh God, cover us. God, give us the word. You have given us a word, but give us the word for the church that we can present it to the ones who are lost. God, give us a radical boldness in this season that we're not afraid to share the goodness of the gospel. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, and we love you. And God, we just believe in, oh God, greater is here. And God, we're ready to walk in the abundance that you have allowed us to have, oh God. We pray now in the name of Jesus. As we leave this place today, God, give us traveling grace, oh God. Watch over us, oh God. Be so close to us. We're asking, oh God, again, oh God, for the sick that's here, the sick and shut in, God. You know who need healings and deliverance. Touch, God, and make them whole, God. And we're going to forever give your name, the honor, the glory, and the praise. Dismiss us, oh God, from this place, but never from your divine presence. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. And all of God's children say, Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. And now, as we leave this place and return to our homes, our families, our friends, our jobs, our hobbies, and our everyday lives. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. abundantly than all we ask or even think 
according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.